Okay, in this video, we are going to be deriving the C6 character table. And so the first thing we want to do is generate all the operations, um, figure out what all the operations are in this point group. And usually the best way to do this is to think about an example molecule. With these point groups that are chiral, um, they don't actually have that many symmetry operations. So I think it's best to just uh, generate them. And what those are going to be is identity. We're always going to have identity. Uh, we have a C6 molecule. CM point group only has rotations and you know, one set of rotations all along what we define as to be the Z axis and identity. So we're going to have a C6. We can do a C6 twice. Um, that's going to be a C3. Right? So C6 is a 60 degree rotation. C3 is a 120 degree rotation. And then we can do a C6 uh, three times. That's going to be equal to a 180 degree rotation. We can do a C6 four times. That's going to be um, equal to doing a C3 twice. And then we can also do a C6 five times. We can't do a C6 six times because that would be back to identity. And these are actually all the different operations that there are. Um, in this point group, there's no other, right? There's no mirror planes. There's uh, no perpendicular C2s. So that'd be a D point group. Um, so this is it. And in the CN point groups, all the operations are in separate classes. Um, and so there's reasons for that that I've described in other videos, but um, it's just probably easiest if you're really needing to derive these from, from total scratch, uh, just to know that fact. Um, and so at this stage, what we can do is, I'm just going to clear this um, now that we've generated this, and we can write the sort of skeleton of our character table. And so we write the, uh, by convention, the um, point group of the character table on the top left, and then we put the different uh, symmetry classes and as we said, they're all going to be in separate classes. So we're going to have identity. We're going to have C6 class. Notice I dropped the hat notation. Hat notation is used for operations. Now we're talking about classes. Each of these classes only contains the one operation. Um, we have the C3 uh, class. We have the C2 class. The C3 twice, that is equal to a C4. And then we have the C6, C6 four times, sorry. And then we have the C6 five times. And we can add uh, a next column here just for any functions that we may come up and end up using in our derivation. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six classes. So, um, our first character table rules tells us that we would have uh, same number of rows as we have columns. So we also have uh, six irreducible representations. Okay, and the very first irreducible representation, we just give these generic gammas, uh, gamma notation at the end, we'll give the Mulliken symbols once we know what um, they are, but the very first one we always know is the totally symmetric rotation. That's going to be ones across the board. And uh, the other five, at this point, we don't know. And so the best way to start out here is to um, start, usually we start thinking about the sum of the squares of across the diagonal. And so you know, the sum of the squares here, it looks like it's going to be one, 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 one. Because one squared plus 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 one squared equals six. And the total number of operations is six. Sum of the squares of the dimensionality, sorry, not the diagonal, the dimensionality, the character under E has to be equal to the total order of the point group, which is the number of operations in that point group. So it has to look like this, therefore. Um, and at this point, we need to just start testing various functions. 
and seeing what happens. So I always like to start out with Z. Um, and so if we do an identity on Z function, um, well, Z, a Z vector is gonna go to Z and uh, we can just draw out our little Cartesian coordinate. Remember our principal rotation axis is defined always as being around our Z axis. So we have a C6 here going various times. Um, and then we're talking about right now a, a Z vector. So we're imagining what happens to Z vector with these various transformations. Of course, identity takes Z to Z. There's a one by one matrix that you know mathematically describes this transformation of taking Z to Z. That's just a matrix containing one. And then we take the trace across this matrix and we get pi, which is, means the character of identity equals one. The trace is just a sum across the diagonals. It's only a one by one matrix, so not very interesting, but we get one. And then if we keep doing this for the other operations, C6, C3, et cetera, um, they're all gonna actually be the same thing. And we're gonna get the same character. So the chi of C6 is gonna be equal one. And why is that? Well, we imagine this vector with a, um, the arrow pointing upwards. And if we do a rotation 60 degrees along across the Z, right, we're still pointing that vector upwards, that arrow vector. So it doesn't change the vector. So C still goes to Z. And hey, it doesn't matter if we do the 60 degrees, um, 120 degrees, 180 degrees, 240 degrees, or 300 degrees, right? They're all gonna be ones across the board. So what that tells us is that all the characters are gonna be ones and the Z function doesn't actually help us generate anything new, um, but it's a good place to start. So um, Z function didn't help us. Well, what's the next one to start with is X. All right, so let's do X. Well, now we're imagining an X vector. Like that. And how does the X vector transform under identity? Not interesting. Identity always just takes itself into itself. So X goes into X. But when we get to the C6, right? Now we have a situation where the X vector has been rotated uh, 60 degrees. And you can see that it doesn't make it itself all the way to Y. Um, it's 30 degrees apart from Y. And we have to describe this vector in terms of both X and Y. And what that tells us is that X and Y actually transform together. And the way they're gonna transform with a C6 operation is using the so-called rotation matrix, the two by two rotation matrix, which just comes from trigonometry. Um, which is cosine, if we do it in radians, two pi over um, six, right? Which is actually equal to cosine two pi, uh, cosine pi over three. But so it's two pi divided by the n um, minus sine two pi over six, sine two pi over six, and then cosine two pi over six. Um, and so, what we then did, would do is take the trace across this matrix um, and we're actually going to get sum of cosine plus 2 pi over 6 plus cosine 2 pi over 6, um, <clears throat> which is what that's equal to. So pi of C6 operation, um, I'm just going to write cosine two cosine pi over three. Just simplifying that to pi over three, and we have two of them, right? Well, what is cosine uh, pi over three? Cosine of pi over three is uh, one, one half, uh, negative one half. So we have uh, two times negative one half, which equals negative one. So but what's interesting here is that we told ourselves that X and Y transform together. So on identity, we also have to think about X and Y going to, together. And we have to write the identity matrix uh, to explain you know, how X and Y can both go to X and Y. 
and they transform together, we take um, the trace of that matrix. And so chi of E, the character of E is one plus one, which equals two. So what ends up happening here is that we actually have a value of two here. And fast forward a little bit, um, this character table is complicated in that we're gonna have to break up this two vector that we're deriving here into imaginary components. And the reason is because we're violating our rule where we're gonna have, you know, if we have this, one squared plus one squared plus two squared plus one squared plus one squared doesn't equal the order of the point group. Furthermore, now we only have one, two, three, four, five vectors that we're lining up rather than six vectors. So our, we have to break this up into two vectors that both have a dimensionality of one. And then the only way to get the math work where there's all the other rules of the character table being followed, um, orthogonality, et cetera, is to have imaginary numbers. Um, and so that's where the complica complication arises. But the first step is just to figure out what this um, non-valid or invalid uh, irreducible representation that starts with the two is, and then we'll break it up from there, okay? So um, we figured out that chi of identity equals two and um, chi of C6 equals negative one. The nice thing about this is that all these other ones are very similar. So if we think about chi, I don't have to rewrite all these matrices just to save us time. Chi of um, C3, now we're gonna have two, cosine two pi over three, and cosine two pi over three in this matrix, and two pi over three, and two pi over three over there. But when we take the trace um, along the diagonal, we're gonna end up with cosine two pi over three plus cosine two pi over three, which equals two cosine two pi over three. Um, and that again is equal to uh, cosine co two, two pi, cosine two pi over three, um, is again equal to is is equal to uh, negative one half, and so this is going to equal a uh, negative one. Actually, I realized thinking about my unit circle here, I made a mistake. This needs to be positive one half um, cosine uh, uh, two pi, a uh, cosine pi over cosine pi over three. So um, one, and this is a negative one. Yeah. And if we keep going through here and we look at chi of C2, that one's actually pretty easy to visualize. Um, we could use this same business um, and we would get uh, cosine two pi over four, but this one actually, you know, it's spinning, uh, the x vector and the y vector just into the negative of themselves, right? Because we're spinning 180 degrees. So the x vector is gonna go there. We had our y vector. Along the y. That would go into the negative self, right? 180 degrees. So for C2, we could write it out, just not thinking about cosines. Um, it was just going to go in the negative itself. And so if we took the trace across that matrix, it would equal negative one plus negative one, which equals negative uh, two. Um, and so uh, up here, in our character, we can then put a uh, negative two. That's what we just figured out. Uh, our next one, going back to our rotation matrix, is, is we're looking at C6 four times, which is also equal to C3 twice. Um, and so that is gonna be four times this value. So we're gonna get what? Cosine eight pi over six on the diagonal there, which is equal to cosine four pi over three. Um, cosine four pi over three, uh, that gets us a uh, negative uh, one half again. 
Um, and so, because this is what, 240 degrees. Um, so across our diagonal here, we're gonna have two cosine four pi over three. Just again, because we're gonna get this similar form here, but cosine four pi over three and four pi over three plus two times negative one half equals negative one. So up here we have a negative one. And then um, our last one is gonna think about chi of C6, five. And that is gonna be uh, two cosine, uh, and it's gonna be five times this. So 10 pi over three, which is 10 pi over six, cosine 10 pi over six which is cosine five pi over three. Um, and so uh, that gets us to positive one half, that, that's a positive one half. So it gets us a value of one. So here at this point, we uh, I figured out sort of what this uh, irreducible representation transform as before breaking it up into imaginary characters. But we know at this stage that x comma y transform as this together. Again, not, not breaking it up yet. Um, and so let's now uh, think about some other functions to help us generate some of these other uh, pieces of the puzzle. And so, uh, it's good to probably test quadratics uh, next. And in order to do that, I like to think about the five d orbital functions. So the five d orbital functions are x, z, y, z, z squared, x squared minus y squared, and uh, x, y. And if we look at something like z squared, as a function, that's not gonna help us because we know our z was ones across the board. Um, and so if we, you know, doing, timesing something by z is like timesing it by itself. So if we do z by z, we're just gonna get z, same, same symmetry as z. And so uh, z squared is just gonna transform as uh, the first totally symmetric irreducible representation. And then similarly, if we think about uh, xz and yz, well, those are similar to xy, which is multiplied by z, right? And so um, just like xy, those two are gonna transform together uh, as this, what we're calling gamma three at this stage. So those don't help us. Um, so what we're left with, we can erase these three, what we're left with are x squared minus y squared and xy. So we can test either one of those and, and see what happens, but that's probably um, a good idea of where to, where to go next. And so in order to do this, let's maybe do xy. We think, okay, what does xy do with identity? Not interesting, xy goes to xy. What happens when we do c6 to xy? Well, we have to um, rewrite our rotation matrix. Just recall this. Remember, this is cosine uh, pi over three, two pi over six, um, cosine pi over three, and <clears throat> sine, uh, negative sine pi over three, and sine pi over three, and all that times by x, y. That's what described how x, y transforms, x and y transform when we do uh, C6. And so um, how is X, Y gonna transform? Well, we have to figure out first how X transforms. And we know that that is, if we expand this out, gonna be um, well, cosine pi, uh, cosine pi over three is one half. Uh, so it's gonna be one half X sine pi over three is root three over two. And we have a negative sign there in our matrix. So negative root three over two y, that's the x part. And then it's x times y. So we have to times that by y. The y part is sine pi over three. So that's root three over two x um, plus uh, one half y. 
And so at this stage, we can uh, FOIL this out. The first term is one half x times uh, root three over two x is root three over four x squared. And then we can do these last terms, these y terms, that's gonna be minus root three over four y squared. And then we have um, the uh, intermediate terms here. So the x, y terms, that's gonna be plus root three, sorry, plus uh, three, so we have a root three times three, plus three quarters x, y. And then we have one half, y times uh, one half, and that was actually a minus, guys. Not doing great here, minus and a plus. And then we have that one half y times one half x, so that's a positive, at least I'm catching my mistakes, one quarter x, y. Okay, so simplifying that, that equals, um, we can factor out, a root three over four times x squared minus y squared. And we can uh, combine the other terms and get plus one half, uh, actually plus or minus one half, and minus one half uh, xy. And so what we see here is that xy transforms as a linear combination of x squared minus y squared and xy. So two for the, for the price of one, what it's telling us is that x, y, and x squared minus y squared transform together. So whatever function we're driving here um, is gonna transform together. We gotta keep them together. And so um, actually, you know, for identity, x squared minus y squared is gonna go to x squared minus y squared. So we have to write a two by two matrix where we have x, y, and x squared minus y squared, just like what we did before with x and y. And this is now the identity matrix, right? And we take that, that of course takes x, y into x squared minus y squared just to multiply that out. Um, and we take the trace across this matrix and we get that chi of identity uh, equals one plus one, right? Uh, summing up the, the characters, uh, the character is the elements across that diagonal equals two. And so again here, we're gonna have a, another component that is violating this rule where the sum of the squares of the dimensionality has to equal the order. So eventually these are this one as well is gonna have to be broken up. But the way that we write this now is actually that we only have uh, four different gammas, okay? And very shortly we'll be able to change these gammas into Moleculean symbols. Then we'll break them up into ones and ones and ones and ones um, with the crazy imaginary components to make all the math still work. And then we'll be satisfying our, our rules where the sum of the squares of dimensionality is one squared plus one squared six times, and one plus one six times, six equals six. Okay, so we'll be good. And we'll also have six of these. We'll only give them four Mulliken symbols, but there'll still be six of these. So we have six, uh, six rows and six columns. So that's another part of our character table rules that we have to um, follow. Okay, so, um, but, at this stage, we're just doing C6 operation. We figured out X, Y goes in linear combination of X squared minus Y squared and X, Y. But we have to figure out what X squared minus Y squared does. So we have to take this term X, right, that came from the rotation matrix, and we have to square it. And so I'm going to do that um, just directly. So I'm going to square this. That's going to be a quarter X squared. And then that's the Y squared term is going to give me three quarters uh, y squared. And then uh, the mixed term is gonna give me negative root three over two. I basically have two root three over four terms uh, when I square it, x, y. Now I have the minus by y squared. So I'm gonna take, this is the y term. Again, it came from here. And I have to square that, remembering that I'm minusing all these terms. So that's the root three over two x times root three over two x goes three, excuse me, three quarters um, x squared, the one half over y times one half over y is gonna give me positive 
uh, one half y squared, but remember we're minusing y squared, so it's gonna be minus one quarter y squared, one half times one half is one quarter. And then we have uh, the two terms together. That's gonna get you root three over four x, y, each of those terms, but there's two of them, so it's root three over two x, y. Um, root three over two x, y, but remember there is a minus sign. So all this is minus x, y. Okay, so this simplifies to uh, negative one half x squared plus one half y squared minus root three x, y. And now we can factor out x squared minus y squared or factor out a negative one half. And that's gonna be negative one half um, times x squared minus y squared minus root three over x, y. And so again, x squared minus y squared um, transforms as a linear combination of x squared minus y squared and x, y, just like x, y transformed as a linear combination of x squared minus y squared and x, y. Means we did the math right, that's good. Now we can write uh, our transformation matrix for the C6 operation for taking x, y, and x squared minus y squared. And really all we care about is the on diagonal components here, right? Because those are the ones that contribute to the trace or the character of the matrix. And you can see the on diagonal components are the part in these matrices that um, you're multiplying by what you started with. So you started with x, y, which is how matrix multiplication works. And you know the linear combination part for the x, y part, the coefficient is negative one half. So that goes on the diagonal. Um, and then same thing for x squared minus y squared. The part that's gonna be on diagonal is the part that is times by, by x squared minus y squared, which is negative one half again. And so now you take the uh, trace of this matrix and look what happens, you get uh, the trace equals negative one half plus negative one half, which equals negative one. And so your character here is now negative one. Okay, so um, this is you know how you would go through for for this whole gamma four. Um, and one other way of simplifying this, we we went out and we um, you you could write this. We could have kept this generic in terms of just cosine pi over threes. Um, it would have been a little bit easier to, to see. Um, and so, but what we have to think about is, so I think actually let's, 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 let's do that now generically. Um, because if we do it generically, then we can um, establish this for all of the different uh, operations more quickly. So let's just erase this. So this way was, you know, nothing was wrong with this. We could go through the exact same math um, and do all this, but just to save us some time going through, now that you've seen this one example, let's try to do this generically. What I mean by that is just keeping things as uh, cosine pi over three. So um, x, y here, now if we write it generically, is gonna be cosine pi over three, right, um, x, minus sine pi over three y. And then we're gonna have times the y component, which is sine pi over three x plus cosine pi over three y. And so uh, what's gonna end up happening is we're gonna get 
cosine pi over 3x times sine pi over 3y. Uh, x sine, sorry. This is actually going to be x squared. Okay, and then we have uh, minus sine squared pi over 3 xy plus cosine squared pi over 3 xy and we have minus sine pi over 3 cosine pi over 3 y squared. And so now we can factor out just like what we did before. And we're going to end up getting cosine pi over 3 um, sine pi over 3. Sine pi over 3 times um, x squared minus y squared. Sure, I'll write it out. Don't really need this component. This was this is the component that gets you um, an off diagonal, right? And so it's not super useful actually. Component that matters is this one, which is the plus x y cosine squared pi over. 3 minus sine squared pi over 3. And if you remember, cosine squared minus sine squared pi over 3 is equal to um, <clears throat> cosine uh, 2 pi over 3. So that's a comes from a generic relationship, which is cosine squared x minus sine squared x equals cosine of 2x. So um, this guy we can actually erase and just put not cosine pi over 3, but cosine 2x, so cosine 2 pi over 3. OK. And so we had a value of negative one here. Cosine two pi over three is negative one half. So that's that element here. So we actually got, if we want to make this more generic, right? Our theta was, um, that we rotated by was 60 degrees or two pi over six. And so we're finding that this on diagonal element is cosine two pi, right? Because it's the x, y component. And the same thing is going to happen for um, the other component, for the x squared minus y squared. I'm not going to go through it, but we know, remember, it was, it was uh, negative 1 half, and that gives us the negative 1. So this is also going to be cosine 2 theta there. The trace of the matrix is then uh, cosine 2 theta plus cosine 2 theta, which is 2 cosine 2 theta. And now we have it in sort of generic terms. And um, this is why we had a negative one here, right? Because uh, for a C6, our theta that we're rotating by is two pi over six um, or pi over three. And our character of C6 is then two uh, cosine pi over three and cosine of pi over three is negative one half, so two times that would get a negative one. Yeah. Um, if we do, now we can very quickly do our other ones. For C3, um, we're rotating by twice as much, so this is going to be two cosine two pi over three, um, and that also gets us a negative one half, negative one. So we can put a negative one up here. Um, for C2, we could try to visualize it because. Um, it's just 180 degree rotation, but might as well stick with this nice formula we have. 
Um, so C2, that's going to be uh, 2 uh, cosine uh, 2 pi. Um, and right, because we're adding it, we're adding it, rotating by another pi over uh, another uh, pi over six. So we we'll keep by another uh, 60 degrees. And so that's going to cosine two pi um, is equal to uh, one. So two times one, we get two there. So this is going to be a positive two. And then we keep going along here, uh, C3 twice. That's going to be two, uh, uh, two cosine. And now we're doing not pi over three, but we're doing four times that. So four, two cosine, theta is going to be called four pi over three, right? But then that's actually, we're doing two theta, so we have to do cosine eight pi over three. And that ends up equaling cosine eight pi over three equals negative one half. So we get uh, a negative one. And then our last one is C6 five times. And that's going to end up being uh, 5 pi over 3 for theta. So we have to do cosine 2 theta. So that's cosine 10 pi over 3. Again, equals negative 1 half. So we get 2 times negative 1 half equals negative 1. Um, so at this stage, it's nice to do a sanity check and just check our orthogonality. So when we do this, um, you know, we don't have gamma two yet, but let's just check that, uh, for example, gamma three and gamma four are orthogonal. And when we do this, uh, remember we have to uh, adjust for, we're taking the dot product. So the dot product should equal zero. And we have to adjust for the number of symmetry operations in each class. So I'm writing this first vector here leaving some space because we're going to have to multiply by the number of symmetry operations in each class. Well, there's only one symmetry operation in each class. So um, this doesn't really change anything, but just to show you for, for rigorousness, right? And then we take the dot product to gamma four. So I'm just writing gamma four out. Okay, and this should be equal to zero. Let's do that math. It's basically two times two is four, plus one times negative one <clears throat> um, is three, plus negative one times negative one, which gets us back up to four, and then plus negative two times two, that gets us a negative four, so now we're at zero, plus negative one times negative one, which is one, plus one times negative one, um, which is negative one. So the ones here and the negative one there cancel each other out. So we did, did indeed get zero. And also, you know, gamma one dotted with gamma three equals zero and gamma one dotted with gamma four equals zero. You can see that here, gamma one dotted with gamma three, and we get a two plus a one plus a negative one, we're back at two plus a negative two, we're at zero plus a negative one plus a one, we're at zero. In this case, two times one is two plus uh, negative one plus a negative one, that's zero. And then we have another two here, so we're at two, and then a negative one and a negative one. So uh, that all works out. Now, we're almost at the point where we can split these up into imaginary characters. But before we do that, we now have enough information where we should be able to figure out by this orthogonality what this last uh, character table, uh, what this last irreducible representation we don't have gamma two needs to be, okay? And so we follow our orthogonality principles. Well, if it's gonna be orthogonal with gamma one, and again, we have one operation in each class, we know that means we're gonna have to have equal numbers of ones and negative ones. Remember, when we have a character of one underneath identity, we can only have ones or negative ones. So we know we're forced with ones or negative ones. So this means if we have, in order to be orthogonal, right? With, with something that's all positive ones, we're gonna have to have three negative ones and three positive ones to cancel that out and be equal to zero orthogonality. So we're gonna have three negative ones and uh, three positive ones. 
Then the question is, what is the correct order to place these, you know, these negative ones? Well, we're going to get um, a positive two here, right? And like for this gamma four case, we're going to get a positive two in, 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 or for the positive three, uh, for gamma three. And so in order to cancel that out, we better make negatives, right? So we make a negative here. That makes gives us a negative when we multiply this out. And then we need a positive here to get us multi, to, to get us to cancel out and get us to zero, right? Um, and then if we keep going along the line, well, um, the, we could put a positive here is possible to get us a negative two. Um, if we, we can try that, um, I know that's wrong, but let's try that. So if we get a positive one, that's gonna get a negative two here. And then we want a negative one there and a positive one there. That would work with gamma um, three, we're orthogonal. Problem is when we get to gamma four, we're gonna be one times two. And then we have a positive and positive are up to four. We didn't cancel each other out. So we have to figure another way out with gamma two to be uh, 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 orthogonal. So instead of putting um, a positive one here, let's put a negative one here. If that gets us to positive two, then I'll put a one here to get us a negative and then a negative one there to get us to negative. So this section becomes positive two, minus one, minus one. That's looking good. Um, and so we're orthogonal with gamma three. And then this section here is going to be negative two, right? Negative one times negative two, and then a negative, um, and then a, 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 a negative one and a positive one. So we had a negative two there, um, but that should all work out because we're going to have, let's just go from gamma two to gamma four. We're going to have two, that brings us up to three. This brings us down to two, then we go down to zero, and then we go to um, negative one, and then back up to positive one. So we are indeed orthogonal. So now at this point, so you just, I mean, it's its puzzling it out. Um, it's not super exciting. There are, there's a cubic function that transforms as this, but you know, good luck finding that. That's gonna take quite some time. So when you don't have too many, you know, things left to do, it's better to just use orthogonality and puzzle it out. We can now um, put down our Mulliken symbols. And remember, we're gonna put down an A or B um, for naming our vectors, an A if we're symmetric, if our dimensionality is one. So our character under identity is one, we put an A or a B. We put an A if we are um, symmetric with respect to the total, uh, to the principal rotation axis. So we are in this case, we have positive one and a B if we are anti-symmetric. For these two, um, we give it an E and an E. And this E is just the E Mulliken symbol, it's different than the identity. Um, but again, here, if now we use, the reason why we do that is because we have dimensionalities of two. We have dimensionalities of two, Mulliken symbol rules say, call it an E. And we're gonna call it subscript one and subscript two for being symmetric and anti-symmetric with the principal rotation axis. So, we're not done yet, right? Because as I remind you, we have one, two, three, four, five, six classes, and we have four columns. So we have to break these um, E1 and E2 vectors up into imaginary components, right? And so that is what we're gonna work on in the next portion of this video.